In our Eye on America, America Left Behind series, we're shining a spotlight on the hidden world of the working homeless, members of the working class who spend their days at work and their nights living in their vehicles with a permanent solution seemingly out of reach. CBS News contributor Maria Elena Salinas is here with more. Good morning, Maria Elena. Good morning, Michelle. Now, earning a regular paycheck used to also give Americans a chance to pay for a place to live. But the cost of housing, especially in major U.S. cities, has been skyrocketing. It's left many families desperate. And just a warning, one father's desperation and where it led him could be disturbing for younger viewers, actually all viewers. Aaron's day begins in darkness. You do what you need to do to get through a given day. You get rest when you can. Today, he's facing a cold rain and a two-hour commute by scooter and bus to his job at the post office. You just keep going through the process of trying to get into better circumstances. And when he's done, this is home. He's right there. I think he just came in. Aaron, his wife Celia, and their two children have lived in this parking lot outside of Seattle for the past nine months. When he has a day off, he will be in the front seat, and then the guinea pigs are at our feet. These guinea pigs are therapy for their son Daniel, who is autistic and traumatized by the family situation. Before we got the guinea pigs, he was not very verbal. He didn't speak a lot. It was very hard on Daniel. He and I were out here, and um, he said, I hate this life, and I hate you. They ask us daily, when will we get a house? When will we get an apartment? Uh, how long are we going to stay here? And all we say, we, we don't know. We are trying our best, because we are trying our best. But their best never seems to be good enough, in part because Aaron makes $17 an hour, often too much money to qualify for public housing assistance. I reached a point where I really didn't see any hope for our situation. That sense of hopelessness led Aaron to contemplate suicide as a way to give his family a better life. I looked up um, what my likely um, Social Security death benefits for my children would be. Celia and the kids were asleep, and I tried to hang myself and um, the belt didn't hold. Uh, I, uh... A few spaces away, Chrissy, her husband, and their three children are also trying to hold on to their dignity. They've been living in their vehicles for six months. What is the biggest challenge in, in trying to secure <coughs> housing for you and your kids? The lack thereof. So we have to settle for whatever housing they give us, and they don't have much housing to give. Both families live here at the Lake Washington United Methodist Church parking lot. Karina O'Malley is the director of the church's safe parking program. It's a secure location with bathrooms and a kitchen and access to social services. There's so many situations that would lead someone to end up living in their car. Have you noticed a pattern of any kind? The main reason that people end up in their cars is because income does not match housing cost. A family with children that makes $17 an hour, they can't afford to rent. What do they do? It's exactly right. It's why we need more affordable housing. Jenny Durkin is the mayor of Seattle, where the median income needed to afford a two-bedroom apartment is more than $75,000 a year. It's getting more and more difficult for people in the middle class to live in Seattle. Right. We need to have a decade of housing where we actually build enough housing for the people living in this region. That's not soon enough for Aaron. All right, thank you very much. He and Celia were denied an apartment a rejection that has now happened 10 times. In his last application, Aaron was over the threshold to be eligible. Okay, yeah, so then we, we just her. have to wait again. The news was better for their neighbors, right. Chrissy and Matthew. This is it, this is it. Their apartment application was accepted. Go play! You're home! For the first time in more than a year, they'll have a roof over their heads and a place to call home. I feel like I'm a child in a dream, and I am literally just going to wake up in my truck tomorrow.
Come nightfall, Aaron will set out again into the darkness, hoping hard work, perseverance, and a little help will provide his family with a brighter future. I love them more than anything or anyone else. And it's an issue not just in Seattle, but across the yeah. country, oh, affordable definitely. housing. And it's so heartbreaking. You, you feel at least they have a safe parking lot, but that shouldn't be enough. Mm -hmm. You are working, you are earning $17 right. an hour to not be able to find housing. Right. We've got to fix this. We talk about the minimum wage crisis. There's that crisis of affordable housing no matter what city. Right, and here in Seattle, the issue is safe parking and not enough safe parking. This is one that's outside of the city of Seattle in King County. I think maybe there's two or three like that, but you have thousands of people living in their vehicles where they can't find a place to park because they have to constantly be moving and everything that, that comes with that, right. with the complexity, especially if you have kids, okay. of, of living in, out of your car. I did the math, a monthly rent, $6,200. I can't believe it. That's it, it's, New York it, prices. It's very sad. And it Oof, and you were right saying this is not something that happens only in Seattle. It's across the country, unfortunately. And you know, the woman we interviewed there really got it right. And the problem is, you know, the disparity between the, the home, the, the salaries and the price of housing. Yeah. Maria, thank you very much. Thank you so much.